Hello, everybody. We are here at the Moyer Press. It's been a minute since we uh, talked with Jay-Z about something, but Jay-Z and I are back on it with Manifestation. So do you want to show us your book, Jay-Z? Oh, yeah, yeah. So we're both reading the same book, right? Excuse me, your life is waiting. The astonishing power of feeling. <laughs> and uh, we found this book through another book because they made a reference to it. And I got mine uh, in a th uh, the same used bookstore that I had found the original book in. I think there's somebody going through all the manifestation books. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was, I think it was in scripture life, right? Or, yeah, like manifest your dreams is just pen and paper that book so he yeah he had read this book and that's what it, it initially got him into manifesting and then he ended up writing his own book right yeah yeah and so i got this book at that uh thrift store which is i mean a used bookstore which is in north carolina and also i have to say that the thrift store that i go to here when i'm in massachusetts i was there uh last weekend they also had a copy of this book. Oh, interesting. So why do you think the title is Excuse Me, Your Life is Waiting? What, what does she mean? Mm. Well, I think it's kind of her style, actually, to... Um, uh, like, I, I kind of think she has this style of telling you you're doing things wrong <laughs> uh, oh. savage review no i don't know it's kind of like obnoxious to say excuse me your life is waiting <laughs> but maybe that's just how i'm reading it how do you read excuse me your life is waiting well i guess i would just say that um she the point of what i've read so far in the book is that whatever you want you can have it you just have to focus on it and do all the work of manifesting it so that's holding visions and blah, 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 blah. And so I guess if you weren't working on manifesting, then your life would be waiting because you'd just be not making your life happen. Life would be happening to you. So it's just yeah. something like that. Yeah. So it's um, while you're going around having your suboptimal life, complaining that you're not having your amazing life, it's, just waiting there for you to stop doing that and to start manifesting it. Yeah, totally. So you and I are learning the power of wanting things and wanting a life and instead of just letting life happen to us. And so I think that's the first lesson of this is want things from life. Um, and whether it be more friends or, you know, I'm um, reading Thinking Grow Rich and in he, that's a manifesting book too and he's like you're supposed to want a bunch of money if you if you're ever going to have money you have to want a bunch of money which got me to thinking like i don't really want a bunch of money i want a bunch of friends so i'm like thinking grow rich with friends or whatever um but okay so the first thing i have circled in the book is we create by feeling not by thought so what does that mean to you Oh, yeah, I think this is definitely true. And, you know, it's funny, like the, the book that you were just talking about, Think and Grow Rich. Well, that's by Napoleon Hill. And he wrote it like forever ago. Like yeah. these ones that we're reading now are people like rediscovering the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it was right? 1937, I think, with Think and Grow Rich. Yeah, right. And it's the same techniques, though. And it's this it's like people from then wanted the same thing people like you and I who are living now want right and or, or are missing in their lives and desiring or whatever also as far to get back to answer your thing about feelings is there is this guy Neville Goddard who was an old school manifester and he had this phrase about feeling the wish fulfilled and that is like the actual, uh, like, I think number one, like tips and tricks or pointers or actually the way it works or whatever is that you feel what it is just like really like in, with all of your being, if you can actually feel 
that thing fulfilled, that's when the magic happens. Hmm. So it's like you basically have to just have the thing you want in feeling in feeling realm instead of reality realm. Like, like if you're mm -hmm. like, I want to have enough time in the day, you're just like, I feel like I have enough time in the day. I feel like I have enough time in the day. So like it's it's it. I mean, feeling is ha having. It's kind of like you. For a lot of things, what you feel like is the truth in some way. It's like you have to create that. I mean, what do you think? Is it true? Is it real? Like, could you not have enough time in the day, but then just decide that you have enough time today and that feeling is having it? I don't think it works exactly like, okay, I think there's a fine line here because I think that there's a lot of like positive affirmations that you don't really believe <laughs> and like saying I have enough time in my day when you don't actually feel it you can say it 18 zillion times it's never going to change anything it'll probably set in the other way because it's like the cognitive dissonance between what you're saying to yourself and what you know you feel to be true is just like not there then I then I don't think it's gonna work. But they have a lot of examples of like that. So pick just the feeling. So it maybe it's more easy with a, a tangible um uh, manifestation and we can circle back to like that you have enough time in your day because that's a little abstract. But like feeling like you have a new car, right? What they want you to do is you hone in on something, something that's like a physical feeling of having a new car. Like if I really did have that, like, I don't know, red sports car that I see at the dealership down the street and wish I had, like I would have the key to it. So what I would think about is like, oh, what would the key feel like in my pocket? Oh, I reached into my pocket and the key is there. What would my hand encounter? Like really feel like the feeling of if I had that car in my driveway, that would be the wish fulfilled. And how would I then like these little micro, but micro feelings but of a really like visceral visual imagery interesting okay because yeah, like some manifestations are like tweaks and thinking like i have enough time in my day you could just be like feeling like enough you have enough time in your day is having enough time in your day so that that one that's a manifestation that only cries a feeling but if you're like i want a boyfriend you can't just be like i felt like i had a boyfriend and then it was real like you know what i mean some of them are just so it's like or like I'm looking for a guitar player for my band or we are. And it's like, I can't just be like, I feel like I have a guitar player. And then that is real. Like, so I think there's different kinds of manifestations and we have to look at there, like, like so the feeling satisfies some, but then some of them you got to feel until you, it arrives. And like, that's the, there's, there's, those are both valid manifestations, but they're just different, you know? Um, especially if a manifestation involves like a moving part or something you can't control. Like I can't control, I can't like contr contrive a guitar player out of nowhere. Like there has to be somebody who comes in and takes the, the part and commits to it or whatever, you know? So like, whereas some manifestations are totally within my control, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And I think though, we also like, you have to make the space for that to happen in your life. Like, I think that if you want a new guitar player, but like uh, you don't ever have any band practices, then like, how are you going to envision the guitar player coming to your band practice, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, or, you know, you have to, yeah, I guess make, make, if I, if you want a new boyfriend or if I want a new boyfriend and I just am so busy there would never be enough time and I never even would think or consider him then like it just like is never gonna happen interesting so maybe the feeling makes us like live kind of as if we have that thing and in that case we make room for it okay the second sentence is only the we only have to learn the simple steps of manipulating our feelings okay so like 
like a big lesson in this one is let's say you let's say you're trying to manifest a guitar player and like our guitar player that we tried out we just i got a text that he's not interested basically so like i could like i could like be down in the dumps about it and be like oh you know but i have to manipulate my feelings and be like no i got a guitar player i got a guitar player it may not be this guy but i got a guitar player like it's like it's like manipulating your feelings back into believing like because it's called oh excuse me your life is the astonishing power of feelings like so like if i feel bummed like she says in this book that you're not supposed to feel bummed you're supposed to feel stoked about the thing you're manifesting oh yeah yeah and that is actually we were talking about this you and i about like that i had a manifestation that i was trying for of like I have a boyfriend who's, you know, blah, 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 and blah, 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 these characteristics about him, right? But it didn't really, like, that was, like, the one, like, it's like, I could say that as many times as I want, but I don't have that. So, like, how do I get that feeling? And it, in switching it, I've been, you know, switching it around to this and that, and I switched it to, like, I date, you know, hot, monogamous, smart, woke guys. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Because that's the kind of guy that I see myself date now can see myself dating because I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what I do. I date guys like that. And then it'll lead to having a boyfriend like that. Yeah, I love this how you and I are learning to tweak our manifestation sentences. Like, for example, some manifestation sentences make you feel bad. And according to this book, that actually harshes manifestation. So, like, for example, I was trying to think of how to sell more books than more press. I was like. Maybe I should say I sell a hundred books a month or, but this number made me feel bad because every time I wasn't selling a hundred, I was like, all oh, the manifestations not working. The mat. So I just f didn't feel it. But then I was like, the books are flying off the shelf. And then I was like, every time I sold a book, I was like, see the books are flying off the shelf. And it made me like feel as if that manifestation, like they were just, you know? And so I think part of what we're learning to do is create manifestation ideas or sentences like I turned it in from like, I, I have this guitar player to like the river cats constantly jam with excited available musicians, you know, see how that makes it more like feel like, yeah, we're jamming, we're jamming. Like, and it, it takes away this, like you could dump us or not. Like if you jammed with us or oh, whatever, you, you didn't jam again or oh, whatever, we're constantly jamming with people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I like it. So I think some of the lesson here for all of us is make a manifestation sentence that allows you to feel the ma feel the magic and doesn't we don't want a manifestation sentence that makes us feel bad in any way. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely key. Okay. And and I think we've both as we've been doing this and learning more about it and how it works, I think we've both are are now understanding like when you get a good sentence that actually or you make a tweak that's better you're like oh yeah you know it's really exciting you're like no this is now it's gonna work yeah and i think when you're feeling like oh yeah this is totally gonna work then you, that's like you know you're behind it a hundred percent and when you're behind percent is when it happens yeah. Yeah. Well, it's when it, it, it make it inevitable. It's like, uh, yeah, I mean, the the wrong manifestation, you know, in stoic philosophy, you're supposed to have visions and then consent to those visions. And that's what makes a happy life. And I think in manifesting, we have to be stoics about it and say, like, I made a vision and now I got to consent to this manifestation sentence about it. You can't just take any manifestation sentence and think that's going to be the best thing ever. Um, so the next thing she says is that we're electromagnetic waves. We're like walking magnets and that's how this works. So what do you think about the electromagnetic theory behind manifestation? Well, I think uh, that people who are into like spiritual ideas all do kind of <laughs> come to this like we are magnetic beings thing. I think like what is the divine spark or the difference between like a living person and then a dead body? Like what is the difference between them is something that like throughout humanity people have tried to answer and they can't answer that. 
And I think that science has been discovering things about, you know, the magnetic way that our uh, nervous system works, the way that our brain fires things. And that's why they could put EEG things on you and then like figure out what it is that's like going on in your brain and stuff. Like I, I, I do believe there's something there about how we are electromagnetic beings. Well, I think we could look at this kind of mechanically and we could say, if you imagine like I date hot woke guys that your chakras start to change to be like your heart chakra spinning and it's open and your root chakra is open. And like, whereas if you're like, I don't date, it's like all of a sudden your heart shuts down. Like, I do think we could say it affects the chakra machine. And in that way, if our chakras are spinning a certain way, we are more like likely to attract certain things. I don't think that's everything about manifestation, but I think we could say that that is one layer. Yeah. Okay. For that. Okay. Um, so she says, if you can't feel it happening, it won't happen. Feel your desires into being. So let's look at if it, we, we're trying to manifest something, but we didn't feel it. Like let's, uh, let's say you're hot. Well, you're constantly dating hot. Well, guys, what if you, um, didn't feel that happening what would that look like um well i mean yeah then it, it it's like the like the moments of doubt and then that it's uh, i guess what you're describing what you were just describing of like shutting down or or feeling like despair or hopelessness or like uh yeah i think and you know you know how um, you're often equating things to like moving towards life or moving towards death. I think mm -hmm. it's like the moving towards death side, not the moving towards light. Is yeah. that kind of what you were asking about? Well, let's say if I'm saying like I'm gonna, we're constantly jamming with cool open musicians. Like I'm just like, I'm kind of like, like this, you know? Like, oh, hey, what's up? You play music? I play music. We're constantly jamming. You want to jam? You know, like, the, I'm like this. But like, if I didn't believe, I didn't feel it happening, I'd be like, we play music. Yeah, I get, yeah, I, I'm in a band. We play music. Like, what, what is that? Dude? Oh, that, yeah. that sends a totally yeah, yeah. different message to the other person. Oh, totally. And you know what? This is reminding me of like what we were just in our Course in Miracles uh, discussion that we had when was that like yesterday even mm -hmm. i think um ab about uh grievances hiding the light that shines from within you yeah i think it's like the same analogy it's like a, a a basket or a bowl that's over your light and preventing your light from shining out and then your light when your light shines out that's what i think attracts other people as well you know because yeah. I think people are drawn to it, to people's like, like just shining light when they believe in something and when they're happy about it. And when they're like, yeah, manifesting, creating something, because that's what manifestation is. It's like it's creating, not consuming. Interesting. Yeah. So that's the lesson is like if you're manifesting something, don't be all like energy closed about it. Be all like energy like like your energy is like a, a freaking water hose of light. Just like I jam with people. I jam with people. My band, you want to come jam with my band? I love my band. You know what I mean? Like, it's just so much more appealing than just like, yeah, oh, I yeah. guess I guess I jam with people like. Yeah. Yeah. Cause who's going to want that. And then who, if the people that do want that, they won't be the kind of people that you're looking for. <laughs> you, know? you won't be helping your project. That's true. Okay. So I think a lot of what we're learning is to not be taken down by 
failures or um, defeat in manifestation. Like what you really learn is like in thinking grow rich, he's talking a lot about like the people who made it didn't give up basically like a Mm. defeat was followed by another try and another try. And like, if you dream, you're like, no, I'm constantly dating woke dudes. It's like, Oh, you're not hanging around to date me. I'm constantly dating woke dudes. Like, like we have to create manifestations where bouncing off like, people bouncing off doesn't affect our, 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 our open-hearted light. We're just like, whatever, whatever. You're not harsh in my sentence. My sentence still is true. Cause I'll be oh, dead yeah. tomorrow, you know? Um, yeah. So this seems like energetic resilience. Oh yeah. And I know we talk about that a lot too, the resilience and that is more important than, um, you know, anything It's like how, quickly you can recover from everything that life uh, throws at you because I mean, that is the whole point of life (laughs) is to be not to like be protecting yourself from negative experiences, but to be able to have all sorts of experiences and be able to like return to where you want to be after them, you know? Mm hmm. Yeah, interesting. So, okay, well, one one takeaway from today is that these 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 manifestation sentences should increase energetic resilience to defeat or failure. You know, like they should make it impossible for us to fail at the thing we're trying to do. You know, energetically. Um, yeah. Okay. So she says the more because emotions- actually, wait, I just gotta stop at that word failure too because. The thing is, like, you try this and then you tweak it this way and then you like you're continually adapting and improving. So failure is only if you like slice it, slice it, stop it and be like, okay, what was the result? Oh, failure. Not like it was an attempt to then then it was an experiment. You realize like, oh, no, that didn't work. You tried something else. So if you like sliced it after the next experiment, which was successful, then the thing wasn't a failure, you know? Interesting. Does that yeah. make any it sense? It keeps you on a vector, you know, as opposed to like a, a like a like I tried and then I stopped. It's like we want to create a vector forward of whatever your your dream is you know until that thing arrives basically yeah yeah because you never fail at anything if you don't stop at the bad point (laughs) yeah well they say that about small businesses that the ones that actually last are the ones that keep going during failure times or hard times they just keep going and then the ones that break down basically just break down or stop quit in in the hard times and so yeah i mean there's something to be said for resilience persistence perseverance with an open heart i mean i feel like that's what this is Mm -hmm. yeah so she says the more emotion the thinker sender charges his thoughts with the clearer the picture turned out to be in many cases so what about what do you about you think of what do you think of a thought charged with emotion? Because like what's, what's okay? So what's the difference between just having the thought like I date woke guys versus a th- that thought charged with emotion? Oh right, yeah. I think then it has more energy. Right. And so maybe this is goes also to the magnetic part of like of your being able to like have an energy field around yourself that attracts to uh, attracts in the things that you want. If you look at it in like kind of that frame of mind, that that framework that you it ha- things have to have energy in order to like have some kind of like um like a perimeter out there you know let's try it let's be like my band jams with people or like my band jams with people my band jams with people so often my band jams with people (laughs) like which one made you want to jam with me (laughs) oh yeah absolutely i want the energy i want the energy and and that, like, so that I think this also is like they all have these sentences. Like, you say, like, 
I wish I had a boyfriend. Yeah, that's a bad right? one. Versus like, I decree that I shall have a boyfriend. Uh, yeah, you're not supposed to say wish or hope in manifestation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that, oh, that's the other, this other book that I'm reading. Uh, wait, where is it? It's um, called Conscious Language, The Logos of Now, where they tell you all the like, all the ways that you can rephrase things so that that they're like active, not passive and express, not suppress and like effective authorship, not resisting authority, blah, blah, blah. Wow. And, like, we'll talk about that at some time too. God, I can't wait to read that book. <laughs> okay. So he, she's saying like attracts like cruddy out cruddy back it's all a vibrational match so that's like what you were saying like if i it was like my band jams with people like if they attracted that kind of person then it would be like they're they're just like okay let's jam like yeah you be eeyores together and then you won't get any shows <laughs> interesting because who so, wants to see that <laughs> So like attracts like, do you think that's always, what about, what about opposites attract or what about, you know? Oh, I think that there is something about opposites attract in my life. I'd have to say that that sometimes happens because I'm extremely curious about people who are completely opposite to me. And it's kind of fascinating but I do also have to say that uh, it doesn't last forever. Once I like do understand like their point of view and where they're coming from and what they want in life and understand it's not the same vision as mine, then I'm like, all right, I don't want this. No. And I think this goes to what you were saying to me about uh, shared visions that when and like like for the example of your guitar player, right? Like if they have a vision of not being in your band and you have a vision of them being in your band, they can't, you can't make those two, you can't force it to happen, right? You have to collaborate with people where you can have a shared vision of the future and then the manifestations can happen. Yeah. Yeah, you might you could negotiate into a, a shared vision, but that if people's dreams just don't align, they don't align. And, and that's you you really only want to manifest with people where your dreams align. They say if two people pray together about the same thing, it's way more likely to happen, which, you know, it, it's like if two people are manifesting the same thing, it's way more likely to happen. But yeah, things change. I mean, how often do people hold the same vision for a long time? I mean, that's rare, you know, but it does happen you know um but like attracts like i mean so she's saying high vibrations attract happy high vibrational circumstances that is true i mean sometimes i feel like i'm so epically not posi core but just like not accepting negativity and not accepting like just anything that takes me down that some people just think i'm too much or they can't handle me or you know what you know what i'm saying so i hear that um, she says it's like a force is attracted. It's a classic rule of physics. Um, so I guess what well, what I think the lesson there is like if you want to attract awesome people, you gotta be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And to what you were saying about like it's not often that people like keep on the same vision for a long period of time. I think that that is depends on their communication. Mm. and specifically their commu constant communication about the vision and about like uh that they're still on track to the vision or not that like you can't assume that like the track that you started out on a vision is gonna remain consistent because just the way that individually you and I are tweaking our manifestations by like changing the phrases or, or getting part of it and then being like, Oh wait, I got this part, but I didn't realize I had to specify. I didn't want it that way, <laughs> you know, and changing your phrasing and like tweaking. It's like sculpting your reality by sculpting your, 
vision, like it, it does need a feedback loop. So if you're doing it with someone else, you have to make sure I think that there's a, a feedback loop there so you can both keep on uh, a constantly moving track towards your constantly changing vision. Okay. Well, a lot of like research supports this, like in successful marriages, I, I study s certain Christian marriage books, not because I think Christians are right, but because they are into longevity of marriage. And so I'm very curious as to longevity of marriage. And one of the things they say a lot, and also the kosher laws of marriage say is that you have to have date night once a week or not have to, but like that successful, happy couples have date night once a week, basically. And what that is, is they go away from the kids and they're all alone and they get to basically reconnoiter on their shared vision. Like you and I do that once a week. We have our date on Sundays at noon relentlessly and we don't miss a week because we got to get our visions aligned. Like, what are we doing as best friends? Like what, what's going on there? And I think I think what I believe now is that this date night thing or this weekly thing keeps the vision because you you can build and feed the vision but if you go a few weeks and the person all these things happen in their life and they start going over this way and this person's trying to manifest this and they're you know it's like it you have to check in weekly so that your life doesn't take a different turn they say you have to grow together essentially yeah i'm with that 100 well that's right. interesting that's an interesting lesson from today yeah um okay so she says, our emotional focus on the lack of what we had was continuing to magnetize more of the same back into our experience, usually bigger and meaner and nastier than the month before. Okay, so what if we focus on lacking, like, I don't have a guitar player, I don't have a guitar player, or you're like, God, I don't have a boyfriend, I don't have a boyfriend. What does, does that, I think that teaches the world, I don't have a guitar player. All right, it teaches the world that we're not having that thing. Yeah, I think then it also prevents you from feeling the wish fulfilled, right? Like if you're so concentrating on the opposite, then you can't trick yourself into feeling the thing that you want. And I think that a lot of the manifestation books are also say, that I, I've been, you know, reading and we've been reading have also been saying this thing between your conscious mind and your subconscious mind and your uh, subconscious mind kind of takes over at the borderland of like when you go to sleep and is very literal. And so if you say uh, something to yourself it will take that literally and then like literally make that happen and that's why if you keep saying to yourself like i don't have this thing that i want you're so you fall asleep and then your subconscious is like okay i'm manufacturing i don't have this thing that i want i don't have this thing that i want there i'm making it happen in reality you yeah. know and that's what's that's all the workers are working on yeah. Well, one manifestation trick is like, if you don't want something like, like, um, let's say you have a teenager and they start driving and you're like, Oh no, I don't want him to get in a car accident. You're not supposed to go. I don't want him to get in a car accident. I don't want him to get in a car accident. Cause like all you see is car accident. And so what you're supposed to do is turn it around and be like, my teenager drives effortlessly and perfectly throughout the world, you know, and like, and you basically, you what's really important in manifestation is that picture right and if you say like i don't have a guitar player like all people see is a picture of you not having a guitar player and so they keep feeding you that experience like but if you say like i'm constantly jamming my band is constantly jamming they're like oh i know someone who wants to jam like it's like you have to present a picture that it's the picture it's you know Oh, yeah, that's true, because you can't have a picture of nothing, right? It's a, you can't have a picture of what you don't want X'd out. That's not a picture, <laughs> right? How do you visualize the opposite of what you're specifying? Yeah, yeah, don't, well, don't doesn't work in manifestation. Like if you say like, I don't want 20 people in my Tuesday group. I don't want 20 people in my Tuesday group. I don't want 20 people in my Tuesday group. Like, what do you see? 20 people yeah. in my Tuesday group. Like, it's like, don't 
is is all you see is the picture that's why it's really hard to say um like if i said whatever you do don't think about 10 onion stands here on a pickle yeah like all you can do is imagine it in order to say don't imagine it like it like yeah. that's one of the the tricks about it is manifestors really get into this vision realm and like creating the right picture you know okay um So she says, pay more attention to what we're thinking about and how that is making us feel. Okay. So this is why I like your new manifestation sentence for the boyfriends. Cause that sentence makes you feel good. Like I'm, I'm constantly oh, yeah. dating woke, awesome dudes or whatever. Like, you're just like, yeah, frick, yeah. But like, if you're like, I have a boyfriend for some reason that makes you feel like, oh man, but I don't have a boyfriend. Like, oh, uh, like it's just, it's hard to explain, but it's like with your manifestation, you have to make sure that that sentence makes you feel good, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it also is it it serves the other purpose of helping you know what it is that you actually want, you know, because it helps. Like, I think you got to get a little specific about things so that you can visualize them. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So let's talk about putting out an, an ad for like on Tinder or like, I'm going to be putting out an ad on Facebook for musicians or whatever. Think about how important this manifesting stuff is when you're putting out an ad, because the verbiage you use in your ad really shapes what you manifest right mm. so manifesting isn't just theory that we're, we're like hootie tootie it's like it actually goes into if you putting a tinder profile up think about what you're manifesting with that profile right like like if i say my my ad like we're looking for a guitar player to fulfill a spot like that's different than if i say like the river cats constantly jams with available growing musicians. We would love to have you in the studio. Come, but you know, see how it, it just makes a different future. Oh yeah. And it attracts a different kind of person, right? Because it's like, Oh, I'm a creative growing uh, person, musician. And I would love to hang out with, I mean, I cannot, you know, like I, I I, I'm just drawn to like, I want to hang out with that. And it, point, it it lets you get people who then that's their future too. And they're excited about that. Yeah. Right. I'm with you. So I just, yeah. I, I think, I think um, it's, it's really important to take manifesting and pen to paper it in the modern day where you do get to shop around and create like you, when you're yeah. making a profile on dating sites and things like that, you, or even a Craigslist post, you are literally making a picture of what you, what's going to happen. So like, think about that, you know? So what do you think about this? Keep focusing and keep focusing and you'll get it. That's, that's one of her points here. I think you and I are a little bit different on this where that you call this being a try hard. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It, uh, well, you say a little, say a little more about it. Well, okay. So there's this, some manifestors are like, keep focusing, like, like, um, like in thinking grow rich, this is a really old book. It's really archaic and kind of offensive, but he's like talking, his, his kid was born deaf and he's like focused on how his kid would hear his kid would hear. And he focused on it for 20 years. And then his kid like got an FM loop and could hear a lot more. And he's like, I knew it would come through, but like he had to be bummed for 20 years as it wasn't coming through. And like, I'm like, maybe if you have to focus for 20 years, that vision is just not really that fun. You know, like, I, I'm not the keep focusing, keep focusing. I'm like, focus and then tweak a vision depending on what, how it's working. Like, I, I don't know. Are you like, focus, 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 focus for 20 years and then you might have it? Or are you like, focus and tweak? Like what? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, I don't think holding something solid that's not working and focusing it more and more on it that just yeah that sounds like not fun at all and it doesn't seem like yeah it, it seems like 
what's more important is to constantly be learning and growing and reevaluating and being self-reflective, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think maybe there's some calibration between like giving up and uh, re uh, redirecting, like, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I, I do think like, I do have like a thing, like I want my band to be full of people jamming, right? Like I'm not going to give up on that, but I might tweak how I'm thinking about it or like, I, I don't know, like, I, I don't know. I think you're right. It is a calibration. It's like a dance between the focus on the prize, but also like the pathway to get there also has to be fun. Like I'm not one of these people who like, is just going to have this only one option. Like, I only have a $2 million house or nothing, you know? Cause like, like if someone's like, I have a $2 million house and like, like it takes them like 40 years to get it. I'm like, well, that wasn't even that fun. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think this is a good question that we could take up next time is, is how, I I don't know. We're, we're, I think it would be a good place to stop here. Cause the next page, I'll give you a teaser is identify. There's four steps. Identify what you don't want. From that, identify what you do want. Get into the feeling place of what you want. Expect, listen, and allow it to happen. Anyway, I know I run through this really quick, but I think maybe next time we can start focusing on this process. Of oh, um, yeah. Yeah, no, that sounds great. Yeah, th and I'm going to think about this in the meantime, too. Like, how do you know when, like, you've given up because it isn't working or you should keep trying or you should change what it is that you want or you know hmm. yeah okay that's it. i'll think on that too like like go because how much do you yeah how much do you just try hard how much do you flex okay everyone think about that for for a week all right cool and then till the next time thank you jesse all right i'll talk to you later all right bye